Civilization 5 is the predecessor to Civilization 6, shocking I know, but what's even more jaw-dropping is that after over a decade since its release, there are still over 20,000 concurrent players of Civ 5, about a third of Civilization 6's player base. If Skyrim is the prime example of a game aging well, Civ 5 is the prime specimen not needing life support on mods to continue its run of excellence, cause let's be honest, Skyrim without mods is a subpar game, and aged about as well as celebrities who overdid the plastic surgery. But what has made Civ 5 age better than US intelligence on Russian operations? Leave a comment on what you think made Civ 5 so resilient, and like and subscribe if you do enjoy, in any case let's get started. The graphics in Civilization 5 are fantastic, let's make no mistake on that. They are realistic, simple, and in all else, enjoyable. If Civ 5 released today with the same graphics, it would not stick out to games over 10 years it's younger, which is impressive. But great graphics doesn't mean jack, right? After all, Civ 6, which released 6 years later, surely has better graph- Oh. In all honesty, let's not get ourselves like Civ 6 Reddit users who snuff that copium. Civ 6's graphics look like it came out of a Looney Tunes Saturday morning cartoon from the 60s. The graphics do grow on you after a while, I'll admit, but with animations like builders jumping 30 feet into the sky and slamming their hammer down like a budget Thor cosplay, and all of a sudden just spawning an animal pen for the horses, finding dads after they went to get the milk is more realistic. And at the end of the day, most Civ 5 players are, for better or worse, history buffs. I'm sure 90% of everyone watching this video right now has at least some interest in history, because that's the demographic of Civ players. That's really what they were aiming for, because, well, it's, it's, it's about history and civilization. And with that, realism from the games is expected. Look at other strategy games, like Age of Empires or any Paradox games. Even with sometimes bright colors, like in Humankind, they still have fairly realistic graphical and art design choices which reflect better on strategy gamers as a whole, which is the main demographic of Civ players. You can enjoy the Civ 6 graphics and say they're better, that's fine, but at the end of the day that is an opinion, and as a broader demographic, Civ 6 was made with more of an emphasis on casual gameplay than Civ 5, and due to that, even though you can, even though you can be hardcore Reddit mod grinding in his basement for Civ 6, the realism of Civ 5 appeals to more of the potential player base, and therefore a lot of people didn't get Civ 6 because, well, the graphics were, for better or worse, controversial. But even with graphics, if Civ 6 improved drastically on Civilization 5's gameplay, the graphics alone wouldn't be enough to carry the game. This is where the depth of Civ 5 comes in. Gameplay-wise, Civ 6 is better, with amenities, housing, and loyalty being a lot better as a growth restriction than happiness, because you can actually build an empire instead of the people revolting and calling for your head like Vladimir Putin after you settled your third city. But the gameplay elements of Civilization 5 are still astounding. I am of the mindset that if Civ 5 released today, same exact thing, same exact graphics, it would be a top tier and well received game. If we include DLC, of course, base game in any Civilization game is absolute dog shit, and honestly, it, it's just, my butthole could make a better game than that. But you have so many mechanics in the game like policies, resources, unit types, abilities, different civilizations, religion, culture, tourism, ideologies, world congress, city-states, resource generation, diplomacy, the list goes on, that the depth is literally un just insane if you really want to spend thousands of hours mastering the game. And even if you're a casual player, you don't need to understand everything. With basic game knowledge on what you should be doing, you can easily beat Prince and probably King difficulty in your first couple of playthroughs. I started playing this game in like the 6th grade, and my dumbass whipped Prince difficulty like I was in a dominatrix hooker fantasy. And yes, most of these mechanics are also included in Civilization 6, that's true, but that's the point. There weren't any super significant changes. Civ 6 had some changes, but not all of them were quote unquote significantly better and uncontroversial. Agendas was controversial, even though in Civ 5 they had the exact same thing, but it was just hidden at that point. Like Alexander would be a lot more likely to attack you in Civ 5, which is exactly what happens in Civ 6. 
Civic tree instead of social policies? Again, controversial. Social policies were actually a really good mechanic, and putting in a civic tree just rubbed some players the wrong way. Policy cards? Controversial. And while, in my opinion, all these changes, and even the changes to districts, were better as they added more strategy and depth to the game, it was still viewed as controversial by the broader player base. And due to that, most people stuck with Civilization V until about the Gathering Storm update, myself included, honestly, although I really picked up Civ VI and started playing it more than Civ V around Rise and Fall. Even now, the mechanical differences in both games aren't necessarily, you know, uh, one is objectively better than the other. Unit stacking, on the other hand, in Civ V was objectively better than Civ IV, because no more Doom stacks. City-states, Civ V added city-states, and objectively, they were better than what Civ IV had, which was nothing. In Civ VI, a lot of the changes were either minimal, like religion, even though I like the different variety of religious units now, or controversial to some extent, and that left a lot of people continuing to ride the Civ 5 hype train. Really quick, I want to talk about the movement in Civ 5 as it was objectively better in any sense than Civ 6. Let's be completely honest here. The main difference is that if a unit had one movement speed in Civ 5, they could still move on rough terrain like crossing a river, climbing a hill, going through a forest, going through a forested hill. In Civ 6, you can't because movement requirements in Civ 6 are pretty much a hard cap. You know, it's because it, like if you have one movement speed and you need two to cross the hill, you won't be able to make use of that one movement speed. Whereas in Civ 5, you would be able to, and even though you don't have the movement requirement, as long as you have some movement left, you'd be able to move on the hill. It would just take up all your movement. That made exploring easier in Civ 5 and much more smooth, as you could move and then cross a river with a warrior, or move and cross a forested hill with an archer, and that includes the scouts. Scouts in Civ 5 had the same movement speed as any other melee unit that was on foot, but they ignored all rough terrain, letting them travel every tile for just one cost. No matter what the tile was, even across a river, a scout would be able to move across it with just one movement cost. Whereas Scouts in Civ 6 had 3 move speed, but don't ignore rough terrain. And because of that, Civ 5 Scouts were a lot better for exploration. And movement in general was a lot better in Civ 5, as it was really restricted in Civilization 6, which kind of takes away some of the fun of the early game. Nothing too significant, I just wanted to mention, but movement in Civ 5 is way smoother and a lot more fulfilling. Another note not to be confused is the fact that since Civ 5 is a lot older, it can be run on older PCs. The performance is just better because A, the game is smaller, and B, it came out earlier, meaning there wasn't as much technological advancement, I guess. There weren't any, you know, new systems, there wasn't an i7, i9, anything like that, so it had to be made for older computers. So some people who might not want to or don't have the funds required to get a new computer can run run Civ 5 reasonably well, whereas Civ 6 would be unplayable, especially in this era where PCs and graphics cards become obsolete within 2-3 to three years max, most people with a computer can still easily run Civilization 5 even if it was older than me, and a lot of that is probably why most people still stuck with Civilization 5 over 6, the game just ran better, and even if your computer could run Civ 6 on like low or medium graphics, the graphics in general, Civ 5, especially on high compared to Civ 6 low, is night and day for obvious reasons. But uh, yeah, the better performance probably did a lot in keeping the Civ 5 player base. Mods are another big factor, but really one in particular being the Vox Populi mod. This mod changed a lot with Civ 5, balancing unbalanced civs, fixing bugs, and just made Civ 5 a lot more fun to play and more balanced. Not to mention that in general, with the game being out for longer, there's going to be more of a history for mods for Civ 5, which were endless compared to Civ 6, especially when it was just released, which just adds another point for Civ 5 in that regard. Even though the mods in Civ 6 are now really starting to take off, especially without any new gameplay updates or anything, Civ 5 still has a lot more mods, and they still had a lot more people to this day still working on those mods. At the end of the day, is Civ 5 objectively better than Civ 6? No. 
but it's a lot closer than you would think, as Civ V was really the breakthrough of the Civilization series. It was the magnum opus. The game was so far ahead of its time, it's actually insane, from the graphics to the gameplay. You know what? Do me a favor. If you own Civ V, or even if you don't own it, open up a YouTube video on the game, or even open the game and take a look at everything, from the opening screen to setting up your game to the actual gameplay. Now answer this question. If this game released in 2022 instead of 2010, same exact thing, same exact graphics, same exact gameplay, how well would it be received? We all know the answer to that. It would be, even today, rated favorably by players and critics alike. If you told me someone who had no idea what Civilization was and told them, alright, which of these two games came first, without showing them the names, of course, because, you know, Civ 5 and Civ 6 is pretty telling, just two different games, which one came first, I'd wager that most people would even say Civilization 5 was the sequel, and that's just a testament to how ahead of its time that game was in 2010, although probably the graphics too. But let me know down below what you think, and as always, leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy before checking out my other content, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.